June 4th, 2018. Orbiting high above Arizona's 100,000 square mile Sonoran Desert, the Worldview 2 satellite captures this image. We have this large circular structure in a God-forsaken remote area with one road leading into it, no roads going beyond. This is incredibly strange. Zooming in, it looks like a big sprinkler. I don't know that I've seen anything like this before. Intrigued by the weird structure, military historian Mike Pavlik consults geographical records and discovers a possible clue. Based on the coordinates provided, this satellite photography is from the Yuma Proving Ground in Arizona. It's a military base, a big military base. It's probably something that the military would like to just, you know, not have prying eyes looking at. The Yuma Proving Ground is one of the largest military testing facilities on the planet. With 2,000 square miles of restricted airspace, it's the perfect place to develop top secret military hardware. We know lots of weapons testing takes place in this area, and if you zoom in on the center, it looks like it could be a gun. Well, if it is a gun, it's big, because that barrel's over 100 feet long. That would be absolutely massive. For ex-CIA operative Lindsay Moran, the massive structure bears the signature of an infamous weapons designer with links to Yuma. It reminds me both in size and shape of this weird weapon that was developed by an engineer named Gerald Bull. Uh, Gerald Bull is a fascinating character. He's an engineer who is closely associated with the idea of building a super gun. Bull was obsessed with developing a weapon powerful enough to launch a satellite into space without needing a rocket to get it there. In 1961, the Canadian artillery expert convinces the United States government to invest in his satellite launching super gun. Here's a model of the Martlet space shell. Let's hope he finishes before they fire the 470 pound missile, otherwise he'll be the first man without pants in outer space. Six years after testing begins, the escalating cost of the Vietnam War forces the military to abandon the project before it's completed. Bull searches for alternative backers for his weapon. As Bull begins to look for other sources of funding, he is ultimately brought into contact with Saddam Hussein in Iraq. And he forms a cozy relationship that ends up being a little bit too cozy with Saddam. The murderous dictator offers Bull $25 million to assemble the world's biggest cannon. It's a hugely ambitious idea, but if it can be made to work, it's a game changer. Nicknamed the Babylon Gun, declassified files reveal its 500-foot, 1,500-ton barrel is so big and heavy, it would have to be mounted on a hillside to fire accurately. Bull maintains the gun is part of the new Iraqi space program. Yet its 620-mile range also puts enemy states Israel and Iran well within striking distance. When Bull begins to work for Saddam Hussein, the Iranians and the Israelis are suddenly turned against him because it looks like he is about to share a technology with the Iraqi military that it can then use to attack Tel Aviv or Tehran. And for that reason, Gerald Bull had to go. In 1990, assassins, rumored to be from Mossad, killed Gerald Bull outside his Brussels apartment. Those five gunshots brought the Babylon gun project to an abrupt end. Martin Morgan discovers that during the 1960s, the US military conducts tests on one of Bull's super guns at Yuma. Maybe the U.S. government has decided to resurrect the Babylon gun, and maybe that's what we're seeing. Yet when Ken Joyce uses Digital Globe's secure watch technology to analyze the image, he discovers another possible clue to the object's purpose. As I look at this site, things get even weirder. What I see is this large shadow on the ground to the northwest of the, uh, of the circle. And then just to the east of the shadow, 
I see what I believe is casting the shadow, and it looks to be a small blimp. The discovery baffles investigators. Why would you have something so random out in the middle of nowhere like this? There has to be some plausible reason. We're only 50 miles from the Mexican border here, so there could be a link. Maybe it's tracking something. Experts consider if the mystery blimp and object in the image are connected to the aerial transportation of drug shipments across this border. The cartels in Mexico have fleets, uh, small planes. Uh, it's kind of one of the way they bring their drugs into the country. Before he was captured, infamous kingpin El Chapo had more planes than even the Mexican National Airlines. In the 1980s, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, rumored to be responsible for up to 3,000 murders, founds the Sinaloa Cartel, Mexico's largest criminal organization. Police reports suggest the feared drug lord operates a fleet of 600 small aircraft to transport his narcotics across the U.S. border. And the volume of traffic was enormous. All these light aircraft come in low, the idea of being to fly close to the terrain and avoid detection. And so the uh, Customs and Border Patrol, CBP, came up with what became known as the TARS program, which is Tethered Aerostat Radar Program. Along the southern border, the TARS program uses six blimps hovering at 10,000 feet to detect unauthorized planes. Each is tethered to a ground-based structure, like the one seen in the satellite image. U.S. Border Patrol uses these blimps to basically monitor traffic going back and forth across the border. Advanced radar in the belly of each balloon can spot any low-flying object over eight feet long within a 200-mile range. They're really an impressive piece of equipment. Over the past four decades, TARS has helped cut the number of illegal flights crossing the border from 8,500 per year to fewer than 10. An almost impenetrable line of defense against aerial drug runners captured from space. It's impressive to think that something that looks so mundane in the middle of the desert could actually be crucial in the war against drug traffickers.